Hey guys, it's Jamie from Rubicon Models here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted my Achilles 2C. Now I went for Seventh Armor Division when painting this vehicle, and I also went for quite a clean scheme with some streaking effects and some color modulation, which I feel really takes advantage of the large flat surfaces provided on this tank. Now in the description below are going to be all our usual links to our website to our facebook group and to our forum please check them out and please remember to like comment and subscribe if you like this video it really helps to begin with i primed the vehicle with a coat of alclad gray primer and micro filler i really like this primer it goes on nice and thin and it's quite strong now we're going to be using the vallejo armored fighting vehicle paint set for british armor in Northwest Europe. So the first color we're going to be applying is Vallejo Model Air Camo Black Green. Now we're going to be using this as a shadow color. We're going to apply it to the bottom of any panels to create some interesting transitions and we're going to apply it along any panel lines where two pieces of armor meet. Now it's also important to note that anything that I do to the hull of the vehicle I will also do to the turret of the vehicle even if I do not necessarily show you that. Sometimes it's not worth showing you things twice so just keep that in mind as we go through this tutorial. Now it's important to aim for this paint to be nice and thin so that we don't obscure any detail. Although it's already pre-thinned, I do add a couple of drops of Ammo of Mig Jimenez acrylic thinner just to be on the safe side. Now our base color is going to be Vallejo Model Air Bronze Green. We're going to apply this on all the areas that we didn't put our shadow color on. So any areas where there's still gray primer showing, it's going to receive a coat of Vallejo Model Air Bronze Green. Again, I've put a couple of drops of thinner in there just to be on the safe side. Now, I really, really like painting British armor. I like the greens. I like the transitions possible with the different painting sets on the market. Now, when painting with an airbrush, guys, aim for thin coats and a nice smooth transition. It's better sometimes to apply multiple coats than it is to apply one thick coat which loses detail and creates inconsistencies in the paint. Now the first highlight is going to be Vallejo Model Air first highlight. Now we're going to apply this to I would say roughly a third of the armor painting towards the top. In order to create interest I'm also going to hit any hatches or rivets or anything that really stands out just to make them pop so that they're more visible. The final highlight is Vallejo Model Air Light Green. Now this is going to go right along the edges of all the topmost parts of panels and on the rear of the vehicle. I'm also going to apply some of this to the gun just to make sure that the gun isn't one solid colour and create a bit of interest there. I like to keep the shadow colour at the end of the gun as a sign of discoloration from where shots have been fired. Now a few guys have asked me what sort of airbrushes I use. For priming and varnishing I like airbrushes with a large needle so I use a Badger Patriot 105. And for modulation and detail work I prefer my Iwata HP B+. It has a smaller needle but it comes on nice and smooth and paint dries really nicely from it. Now the basic modulation is finished, we're going to start painting the details of the vehicle. I decided to start with the shells inside the turret. It's quite hard to show these on camera because of the angle. I didn't have any brass paint to hand so I mixed Andrea Base Gold and Andrea Brown Ink at a 1 to 1 ratio for the base coat. After this I'm going to get Vallejo model colour black grey and we're going to be painting quite a large amount of the vehicle with this. This is a colour that I like for tracks which you can see me doing here right now. I also like it for road wheels and I also like to use it for the base of any metal tools on the vehicle in 28mm. I've put a couple of drops of thinner in there just to help it flow nicely. And I've used a wet palette so that my paint doesn't dry out before I've finished with it. Now for chips, I'm going to use Vallejo Model Colour Black Grey. And I'm going to use a piece of sponge 
with some of the paint on I'm just going to take most of it off and start dabbing in a random fashion to create some chips now how much you do is completely up to you it tells a story about how much conflict your vehicle has actually seen me personally I like to use it on edges of panels where the crew have been getting in and out of the turret etc just a little amount goes a long way in my opinion any dark grey will do for this you've seen me use German grey in the past now I'm going to return to the shells inside the vehicle and I'm going to give them a nice coat of army paint at ink strung tone I really like this for creating different tones within a part of a model or a part of a vehicle especially on flat surfaces like this it'll just pull in the recesses rather than on top of the shells themselves now returning to black grey we're gonna visit those shells again once the ink has dried and we're going to paint the tips black grey now it's really really hard to show this on camera I hope you guys don't mind that you can't really see you can get a rough idea here of what I'm doing and now it's time to start base coating any wooden areas I used Vallejo model color burn umber it's a nice deep brown it's going to be a nice shadow color for those wooden areas And now I come back with Vallejo Model Color Gunmetal Grey and apply a highlight to any of the metal tools that were coated with Vallejo Model Color Black Grey. I like the contrast between the metallic and the non metallic paint. The wood receives a highlight with Vallejo Model Color Beige Brown. It's going to help it pop, it's going to be noticeable. And I just keep some of the burnt umber around the edges. Now we're ready to start with the wash and with the transfers so I'm going to give the model a coat of Liquitex Ultra Gloss Varnish I like to use the pre-thinned one for ease and here I'm using my Badger Patriot 105 I mentioned Now we're going to start using enamels which are some great paints and we're going to be using ammo of Mick Jimenez which I really personally like Now we're going to use dark brown wash for green vehicles and we're going to apply this along all the panel lines and around any rivets and around the turret ring thanks to the gloss it's going to flow nicely and you're going to see the cool thing about enamels is that you can actually take them off they're quite slow drying and using some white spirit or odorless thinner I personally use ammo of Mick Hemenez enamel odorless thinner we can get a brush and we can just take it off the model I recommend using synthetic brushes when dealing with enamels just so you, you don't damage your ex more expensive Kalinsky Sable brushes here you can see how nice that wash just comes off and stays in the recesses you can also use foam to take off excess wash as you can see here foam is quite useful when painting tanks you can do chips and you can take off enamel effects and streaks with it the cool thing about enamels is you can always remove it if you don't like the effect at all and thanks to the gloss the paint underneath is nice and safe again whatever I do to the hull I also do to the turret and vice versa now we're ready for transfers and decals once that wash has dried now use some water and some tweezers and just move your decals where you're happy with them take your time and in my opinion take advantage of the large selection included on the Rubicon models decal sheet once you're happy with the decals apply a coat of fixer I personally use Vallejo model color decal medium through my airbrush what it does is it helps seal them in place but it also kind of melts the decal to the model so you can't see where they end because it's alcohol based once that's dried 
me another coat of ultra glass varnish from Liquitex because we're ready to start the streaking effects. We don't want to damage the decals that we've applied, that's why we do another coat. Now we're going to use ammo of MIG Jimenez Rainmarks enamel streaking effects and we just apply these with a synthetic brush in a downwards motion. Don't worry about being too neat, you can take it off, it's an enamel. I like to use two different shades of streaking effects just to create different tones and different aspects of weathering. So for the second one I've used Dark Grime, again from Ammo of Mick Jimenez, and I've applied this between the Rainmark streaks. How much streaking you do, again, is completely up to you and it will tell a different story in your final vehicle. I like to hit this on decals so that decals are weathered and part of the vehicle. Now taking a flat synthetic brush with a little bit of ammo of Mick Jimenez enamel odorless thinner, we can feather these streaks out to make them look natural. They simulate dirt, they simulate stains of anything moving down the vehicle from rain, condensation, the crew walking around on top of their general dirt and grime that's been picked up on by the vehicle. Now I really like doing streaking effects when there's a large amount of flat panels like there are here. It stops the vehicle from just looking like a solid green tank, it adds a bit of interest. Now the tracks are also going to be weathered with ammo of McHimenez. I mix the earth enamel and the Europe dust pigment one to one and using an old brush I just apply it to the tracks. Now the reason I actually use an earth enamel rather than pigment fixer is that like the enamels that we've been using already we can take it off with odorless thinner. So what you'll see me do shortly is take a brush with some odorless thinner and wipe off any excess earth or enamel that I'm not happy with. Weathering like this is why I always recommend people keep their old brushes because you don't want to kill your good brushes with this sort of work. Now we're finally ready to finish the vehicle. I apply a coat of Liquitex Ultra Gloss to protect all my paintwork. And once that's dry, I give the model a coat of Dester's Dual Coat Varnish, which is in an aerosol can, and you receive the finish that you see here. Unlike some matte varnishes, I find the Dester's Dual Coat doesn't kill contrast, and the vehicle is ready for the tabletop. So please guys, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Any questions at all, feel free to ask. And I'll see you guys next time when we'll take a look either inside one of our kits or we'll paint another one of them together. See you next time.